how to plan your school year, whether you homeschool or you teach in a school classroom, in three simple steps. Well, I wanna welcome you to the Brown Bear Book Club. My name is Brianna, and um, we are all about empowering you with resources for young children. So whether you are a parent or educator, this is the place for you. Go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy content like this. And make sure that you stay tuned to the very end of this video because I'm gonna share with you some really fun little teaching tools that I used last year that was super helpful and I hopefully it will help you too. Before you start shopping and getting all the things, take a look at that curriculum before you shop so you can really see what are they gonna be learning this year and what materials are gonna help bring this curriculum to life. And then step two, ask yourself, what was missing last year? I know for us, last year I really wanted to uh, integrate science more. And so I got this really cool microscope that I can put in my science area in my home, and you can do this in your classroom too, is have a science area and children can observe things throughout the school year or each semester or every few weeks, and you have an ongoing science center. Or maybe you wanna have a class pet or a fish or a bird. I know one year I had a fish, I've had a bird before in a class, and I've also had plants. Those are all things that can liven up your science center in your class or in your home. Another thing that was missing um, for us uh, last year that I integrated towards the end of the year is handwriting. I honestly, as my little one who's in pre-K, I never really thought about how to teach a child how to hold um, hold their like pencil or their utensil like how do you teach someone how to properly do that and I came across um, something called teach my preschooler and one of the cool things I absolutely love about this uh, thing is that it comes with this little writing board and it shows you it shows the child how to write that's there disappears but not only that, they show you how to teach children, the A-OK -okay methods. So they can hold the pencil correctly when they begin writing. Um, another cool thing with handwriting, because I, my curriculum that I used last year didn't really cover if your child is ready for handwriting to how to do it, I found this really cool curriculum called Handwriting Without Tears, which was something to supplement. So think about what are some of those things that was missing last year, but then also some of those evergreen things like I knew for sure that we were gonna do journals. Journals is always a staple, but not any old journal. This year, I wanted half blank and half line paper. That was something super important. Or books like The Weather, books that you always use or topics that you always use. Um, or we started counting past 10 and a lot of preschool books tend to only stop at 10 and this book really goes up all the way up to like in the 20s, which was something that I really needed um, to help my little preschooler, or if you have a kindergartner that's counting higher than that. Bonus step, it's never too early to start praying and asking God for wisdom, discernment, and strategy for next year. And then the last step, organization. How do you plan to organize your teaching materials and how do you plan to organize children's uh, materials that you're going to use all year round. Will you use a rolling cart or a file cabinet to stay organized with all the educational records, portfolio, and materials? The next thought of organization is how will you organize the children's materials? Will you put the name on the outside in a picture of what it is, whether you have an open shelf or a clear bin, just to help cleanup time be more easier? And a cool little t t teaching tip is if you use Velcro, no matter where you're switching out your bins or on your shelf, you can always just switch out your cards, laminate them. I didn't laminate this one, but you should definitely laminate it. And that way it's super easy and you're ready to go. So just some fun little teaching tools that I used last year was uh, these little post-its. And so they really came in handy for marking the pages in the curriculum and even down to the exact spot that I left off. As a laminator, honestly, if you, um, especially if you're printing things that you know that you're gonna use in the future, having your own personal laminator with laminate sheets was a total time saver, life saver, and it also preserves so much of your amazing teaching tools that you're creating all year round. Velcro dots or Velcro strips sentence strips. This really helped me to create a literacy field environment by just labeling everything and putting Velcro strips or Velcro uh, dots on things and just being able to swap that out really quickly. 
Another cool little hack was these little transparencies. A lot of times if I didn't know the song with the kids, I would have the song facing this way and maybe a picture for them to see. And this really helped out this little, um, these little transparency sheets um, where you can just put things in there and it can be like a writing board for the children to write with dry erase marker and it erases really quick. So let me know right now in the chat below out of those three steps, whether it's organization, figuring out what was missing, what are you gonna add, what are you gonna supplement, uh, evergreen materials, books and different things like that, uh, tools, what are you gonna do this year to start your year off strong, to start off right? Um, have you already like studied your curriculum so you are confident um, going into the next school year uh, of materials that you're gonna be shopping for within whether today, tomorrow, or the weeks to come? So let's talk about it in the chat below.